Thank you whoever's tuned in already. I'm gonna lower this level. Hopefully you guys can see everything. Good. Y'all can see the bar. Everyone can see me. What's going on YouTube? Sorry for the last minute live. I was actually trying to film this as a video, but it's tight quarters in here, hard to film. So you guys can see I got the rack out. And we got barbell set up for deadlifts. So, routine that we're starting off with. We got 235 on the bar. There you go, guys. You guys a better view. All right, good. All right, what up, guys? Sorry for the small quarters. We're filming in the spare room today that I built for myself to train in. So I got 235 on the bar, set one. We're doing three rep deadlifts right into a front lever hold. So this is front lever specific training, the first routine of the day. We're pretty much going to be training full body because deadlifts are going to hit lower body too. But it's going to be an upper body focused day, specifically training front lever strength and skills. So, you guys can see, setting up to deadlift, 235 on the bar. Right from the deadlift, we're going into a front lever hold. And we're going to be cranking into it, meaning we're going to do the front lever as a hinge exercise. So we're going to start in L. We're just going for two to three second front lever hold, just to get that time under tension, get your body in the, ring, in the actual pattern of motion of a front lever. Remember, I've said this numerous times, deadlifts going to be a very, the number one exercise that you guys could do loaded to help you train for a front lever, right? Being in the locked out position in the deadlift, right? Your glutes have to be engaged, your lats are engaged, you're pulling that bar up off the floor, right? It's mimicking the same type of pull and engagement and isometric tension needed to hold the isometric front lever. So we're gonna increase the weight of the deadlifts each set. Set one was 235, and we're only going for three total sets of three reps. Listen, you don't have to do too much. You don't want to have breakdown in the form of the front lever. If when you get into the lever after the deadlift, the lever is sloppy and you're missing that glute engagement, we're stopping the set, right? So I want just three sets of three solid front lever holds, increasing the weight on the deadlifts each set. What's good, guys? What questions you guys got? Yo, Wes, what's good? No identity, what's going on? Cold Treasure, appreciate you. Thanks to everyone who's tuned in. Let's get those likes up. Come on, guys. Get the lights up. Sorry about the view, guys. Like I said, just tight quarters in here. Hope the front lever was a good view. You guys can see the deadlift bar. So like I said, there's 235 on the bar for set one. We're gonna add, we're gonna go up to two. 275 for set two. So I'm taking a 25 off each side. Putting a 35 on each side. So we're now at 255, and now I'm gonna add two tens. So 10. And another 10 on this side. So 275, we're gonna go for another three reps. Remember guys, you guys gotta learn to train smart, right? This is hard training, right? The intensity is high, is high. The load for the deadlift sets are very high, right? And then going into a front lever, front lever is not an easy exercise. Holding isometric time takes a lot of tension, a lot of effort from the body itself, right? So you gotta learn to recover in between each set two to three minute breaks in between each set right now. 
and I'm only going for three max sets with the heavy load because I don't want to fry or do too much work. You want to do a sufficient, effective sets. Yo, HD, Hellion, thank you. No problem, bro. Thank you for tuning in. Dappers, let's go. Big ups to you in England. So, you guys got any questions? Let me know, guys. So... HD, I actually was filming this with my camera first. I was going to make an actual a video, a full video for the channel. But because the space is, to is so tight, I wasn't getting good angles of it. So I actually warmed up 155, 10 reps, 185, 6 reps of deadlifts, and then just front lever raises. Just dynamic front levers, just going up and down. Didn't do any isometric holds. And then set one was 235 for three. Now we got 275. We're going to get another three, another front lever hold right now. Throw some clips on. Throw clips on the bar. Let's go. Three reps. And I'm deadlifting barefoot, guys. This whole routine is done barefoot. Guys, let's get the likes up. I appreciate everyone who's tuned in. Yo, me and Maddie, thank you for tuning in. Big ups to you in UK. Appreciate you. Yeah, then barefoot, you get to really ground, feel your feet connecting to the floor. How's that view on the lever, guys? You guys can see me holding the lever? Let me know. You guys see the lever hold? It's in the frame. Yo, Mother Russia. Thank you for tuning in. Rimidov, appreciate you. Thank you for the heads up. No identity, appreciate it. All right, so we did 275 set two. Let's load the bar up a little more. So we're taking the tens off. So right now the bar is loaded to 255. Gonna throw the 25 back on. So we're at 305. Where's the other 25? I'll put it on already. Where's my clip? So, let me show you guys. I think no one's capping. We got, so we got a 35, a 15, a 10, 
a 10, a 35, and a 25 on both sides of the bar, obviously. So we got 305 on the bar, guys. Again, and we're using a, it's a new road rack that I bought. So I set this road rack up in my third spare bedroom. Nice little workout area I got here. We got the tree, we got the dumbbells in the corner. You guys are gonna see some front, some straight arm planch work in this routine as well. Told you guys, stay tuned for the planch. Planch is gonna be coming real soon. And I'm not even really training for it specifically. It's just gonna come out. Make sure you guys can see the front lever still. I feel like you had a better angle before. There we go. So now you guys can see everything. You got the deadlift bar in here. So now is there, a, honestly, HD, I have not straight bar deadlifted in a few months now. I've been doing a lot of trap bar work, as you guys can see. I have a hex bar or a trap bar, whatever you want to call it. I like to alternate. So I'll usually do uh, straight bar deadlifts for a few months, and then I'll alternate to trap bar deadlifts. Trap bar deadlifts, traditionally, you're always going to be stronger because you get to use uh, more leg involvement. It's not so much of a hinge, and you hold the bar neutral. So you get a little more strength involved with trap bar. Different muscles worked, but still two excellent exercises for pretty much full body work. So let's go. All right, so we got 305 on the bar. I think I messed up this angle a little bit. I don't know how. There we go. Now you guys can see pull up bar. Let's lower this a little bit. You guys. There we go. So now we got deadlifts in there. Damn, bro. This view ain't ideal. All right, let's go. 305 on the bar. band here does it have the weight no but this is probably not helping much at all so we're gonna do one band assisted front lever to add some time and volume and again this band is barely gonna help But you see, a little bit of decreased intensity allowed me to add a nice two, three seconds to that hold. So I decreased the body weight intensity slightly, but the intensity of the hold was still there. So balancing it out. That's three sets of the deadlift to front lever done. We're gonna, like I said, it's going to be a specifically upper body day, and that was the main front lever work. But we're still going to get on some pull work. Next, we're going to be doing weighted pull-ups. Getting strong at weighted pull-ups are going to dramatically increase your pull strength, which is going to have a great translation over to being able to do front levers, because front levers is a ton of straight arm, lat engagement, but you need to have that pull strength in general. you got to know how to keep that glute activated. That's the benefit of doing deadlifts. Deadlifts are going to help you mostly with that line engagement, right? Keeping that line for the, for the front lever, because it's going to mimic each other, right? Now we're going to get into weighted pulls to build up on our pull strength. Come on guys, get the likes up. Appreciate everyone who's tuned in. Here's what the inside of the 
Yo, Lawrence, big ups to you in UK. Appreciate you. Yes, HD, the trap bar is going to focus on more legs because remember, a traditional deadlift like I'm doing now, we're hinging and lifting like that, right? There's only slight bend in the knee. Now with a trap bar deadlift, you're holding the bar here, you're lifting the weight up like this. More leg involvement. See how much my legs bend almost to 90 degrees? Then you stand up like that with a trap bar. Deadlift, you're not bending the knees like this in a deadlift. Slight bend in the knees, hinging from the waist more, lifting with the posterior chain. Two different exercises, similar patterns of movement, similar muscles trained, just slightly different. Yeah, bro, that's why. Front levers, muscle ups after deadlifts always feel a little lighter. So, I'm gonna do actually, I'll do. I'll keep 305 on the bar right now. I'll just go for one set. One more hold, 305. I'll hold it up at lockout for five to six seconds now. Then I'll put it down, I'll go for one more band assisted lever. Let's go, 305. Locking out, holding, engaging every muscle that's engaged in the front lever. Let's go, right into a band assisted front lever. There's four total working sets of deadlifts to front lever supersets. Now, like I said, we're going to get into weighted pull ups. What's good, fellas? Let me know questions you guys got. Yeah, bro, HD, that's why I like to switch it up. I'll focus on trap bar deadlifts for a certain period of time, and then I'll switch back to traditional, regular deadlifts. Yo, Cole Trezor, you already know, appreciate you, man. Yes, so to increase jumping power, the trap bar is way more sufficient. We're gonna drop down, well, we're gonna drop into weighted pull-ups now. Typically, I've only been working with my 60-pound kettlebell. As of late, I brought this 70-pound out. If you guys watched the live on Thanksgiving, when we did 11 sets of 25 reps, I had the kettlebell, the 70-pound kettlebell out. Not ready to use the 70-pound kettlebell in all my workout checks. I didn't hit the numbers I really wanna hit with the 60. I wanna hit four sets of 10 weighted pulls with a strict two-minute break in between. Right now, I'm about three sets of 10, then I fail on the four set, only get about eight to 10. I also wanna get one straight set of 16 plus pull-ups with the 60 pound strapped on, just one clip, and then I'm ready to move to the 70. But for today, we're going to drop, and we're gonna hit 50 pound weighted pull. So we're gonna go for three sets of 12 reps with 50 pounds, and be able to bring the bar, the phone a little closer now, because we just gotta see the top of the bar. Now, so you guys can see, this bar, really fat, right? Look at that grip, my thumbs don't even meet my fingers. So I'm when I use fat bars, I like to go thumbs over as opposed to thumbs under. I get more forearm and brachialis activation, more muscle engagement of the arms when I go thumbs over. So you guys can see the full bar. Yeah, man. You gotta have goals, man, and you gotta work on your goals. That's training, that's progressive overload. Always trying to do a little better, a little more. That ensures that you're gonna be getting stronger and making progress. So, got the weight belt. And so, still weighing in 
in the mornings around 162. So I haven't really gained, it's been almost three weeks now, I haven't really put on a pound, and I'm eating around 32 to 3,300 calories a day. And that means my body is adjusting to the new calorie intake. I'm gonna have to eventually up the calorie requirements. I'm probably gonna have to go to 3,500 calories soon in order to keep seeing that scale go up. But I'm maintaining relative leanness as I'm still putting on this weight, and I'm getting stronger every week. Every week I'm, pro, I'm making progress in body weight movements and in my weight training. And remember, I only do certain movements with weights, right? I do squats, dumbbell bench press, overhead pressing, and some type of deadlift. So those are the only exercises that I use external loads for. So, we got 25 pounds. 25 pounds. Yes, like a, five, a fat bar makes everything harder, especially muscle ups. So, I got 50 pounds strapped on. Goal is to get 12 reps or better each set. Set one, 50 pound weighted pulls. I'm gonna rest again, two minutes, two more sets. So, this whole first part of the workout, the deadlifts, obviously the front lever holds, and the weighted pulls, it's gonna be all be critical at getting better if you guys wanna perfect the front lever, right? You guys are gonna have to get stronger at your pulls. Remember, volume, leads to strength. Strength leads to more volume. They are inversely uh, related. The stronger you are at a given weight, the more you can rep at a less percentage. And the more you can rep at a lesser percentage, the higher your one rep max will be, right? The more strength you're gonna be building to lift heavier weights. So they're inversely related, right? So people ask what's the best way to get stronger. You get stronger doing higher reps and you get stronger doing lower reps. Typically, when training for strength purposes, working a lower rep range, that one to five rep range, is more beneficial, and you'll see jumps in numbers faster. Because remember, if you could rep 10 reps this week with 50 pounds, then next week you could rep 12 reps with 50 pounds, you did get stronger, right? So remember, strength is not only directly, only, not only directly related to load lifted for one rep, also refers to how much volume lifting for a given set. Yeah, false grip. But to be honest, I don't like to train with a false grip when doing pull-ups or front levers because you're not always gonna have that option on a smaller bar. I used to train false grip a lot, put a little more too much stress of inflection for me. It's very demanding in the flex in the flex position for the wrist. A ton of strain on the forearms too. But it's definitely something everyone should learn. What do you mean, HD? What do you mean recommend for endurance? Explain. Yes I do, brother. Check it out. Dip attachment. Bro, this, it also got the safety bars, two safety bars. So this piece of equipment is very versatile. You do a lot on here. It's American made too, bro. You don't get better quality than this. Full uh, aluminum or steel, whatever this is, really tough. And I just got this, I bought it used. Oh, this brand new was over a thousand dollars for the whole setup. So I got it for a good price. 
So endurance is different, HD. Endurance means more work capacity. So typically you don't, you can build endurance with any load, right? Because eventually a load that used to be hard for you, like if you're just learning out pull-ups for, let's just say for instance, you're a beginner and you're just learning pull-ups, right? Pull-ups in the beginning are gonna be strength-based. You're gonna be working in that lower volume rep range inevitably. But as you get stronger and stronger with your body weight, you can do more and more reps. And eventually, once you start passing that 15 rep mark, typically with any exercise, you're gonna be working more of that endurance factor now. Because remember, there's a difference between aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity. Anaerobic exercise means there's no oxygen to the muscles. That means you're gonna have a buildup of lactic acid, and eventually you're gonna have a drop off of reps, and you're pretty much gonna come to failure. Failure. If you could do an exercise where lactic acid is not produced, that means you're not really tapping into that anaerobic system and the exercise is now more predominantly endurance based for you. Perfect example, push-ups, right? Most people could get on the floor and hit 20 plus push-ups, right? Maybe if you're a beginner, 20 might be hard to get to. But once you start doing push-ups on the regular, 20 is a very easy number to hit. So once you get past that 20 very easily, you'll be working more endurance. And then when you start failing on the endurance reps, that's when you start tapping back in to those anaerobic systems because now you tapped out your endurance, you can no longer rep, and now you're pushing out single reps at high numbers. Not, the, not my favorite way of training for strength, right? For endurance, I love to go to high reps, but I don't like to push high reps out under stress because once I'm 80, 90 reps of push-ups in, right, and I want to get that last 10 for 100, those last 10 are now more muscle building, but I had to go through 90 reps to get there. If I want to just do endurance, I would hit 80 reps, Easily stop, rest two, three minutes, go for another 80 reps. I wouldn't push past that 80 to 100 threshold where I'm starting to get fatigued again and fighting for reps. Let's go. Set two. Let's go. We gotta get 12 again. 50 pounds, strapped on, 225s, fat bar. Again with the 50. Here, another perfect example. Look, I'm failing at 12 reps, right, on that 50. I could push out 13, maybe 14, and then fail. Now, if I can hit this for 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 reps easily, I'll be working more endurance. Endurance comes when it comes down to load, right, and intensity. So you don't train endurance with high loads because it's impossible to do that work capacity with a high load. If I had 315 on the deadlift bar, can't lift it for 20 reps, impossible. I'd have to lower that down probably like 200 pounds to hit sets of 20. So you understand what I'm saying, HD? Which parallels should I get? The very low ones or the higher ones? I want them for handstands and I want to learn planche. Lower, you don't want them more than a foot. A foot height is ideal. So look. I made these parallels probably seven years ago. Still holding up. I have a video on my channel too. How to make your own parallels. Cost you less than 30 bucks. So you guys can do it at home too. Just PVC pipe. This one's probably straddle planches, tuck planches, anything like that. All right, so we got one more set of pulls, guys. For sure, Black. Too much flavor, man. What kind of exercise you want to see? Chest. We got dips, bro. I'll be doing dips for chest pretty much. I did chest too. If you guys watched the last video posted, video I posted up yesterday, it was a full video. Me talking about overtraining as I'm training a full leg and chest workout. So if you guys are looking for a chest routine, 
Go watch that video. I just posted it up on my channel yesterday. Yeah, so Joshua, man, you got to learn how to scale the volume and the intensity down. Right now, it's a perfect example. I'm mixing weightlifting and calisthenics. I did deadlifts and front levers, and I'm still going to do more weightlifting in this workout too. Because all I do, so listen, if your goal, if you want to train calisthenics, focus on 90% of your workouts coming from bodyweight training because you're going to produce amazing results. You'll gain amazing strength, and you'll build an amazing physique without any extra extra exercises needed, right? You don't need any external load or gym workouts to build an amazing physique or get strong. All they will do will benefit you and take you to another level. And all I recommend doing, the only exercise you gotta throw in, something for legs. You guys wanna be doing a squat, some type of leg exercise with external load, a deadlift, an overhead press, and you don't even have to do a bench press, uh, a exercise for chest, because you train chest in so many Hope we didn't lose you guys right now. You guys still here? My bad, I got a phone call interrupting. So, I'll show you some chest work also, but be a little more specific, Flavor. Yo, Daz, appreciate it. All right, we got one more set of 12 weighted pulls. I'm filming right now, bro. Drop it off at my mom's. All right, let's go.
So, remember, you guys got to learn to scale the volume and intensity. We did two loaded pull movements, barbell deadlifts and weighted pull-ups, and one body weight, which was the front lever work itself. So remember, guys, the intensity is high, but I'm not hammering myself and going to failure on everything, right? Going to failure on the, on the front lever hold attempts, that's the only thing I'm pretty much going to failure on. Now we're going to get into some push work, specifically for shoulder strength, which is going to benefit the planche and the handstand training. So let's set up the, let's set up the rack for that. And yo, thanks for everyone who's tuned in. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the likes. I appreciate all you guys. JR, man, you get sick for all training, man. Watch the last... Watch the video of the last live I posted two, two live videos ago from Thanksgiving Day when I did 11 sets of 25. I didn't get sick, but it weakened my immune system, gave me a little cold. That's very common. That's what happens to runners. A lot of runners, they'll run marathons, then they'll come out with a feeling sick or with a, with a respiratory infection because it's too demanding, that type of work. Yeah, bro, all that. Remember, overtraining will lead to bad sleep. Overtraining is going to lead to everything. It's going to lead to elevated cortisol levels. Elevated cortisol levels, you're going to keep you in a stressed out state. Your body's not going to want to be calm or in that parasympathetic state when it has elevated cortisol levels. So sleeping is going to be very hard at that time too. All right, so you guys got to give me a minute. I got to take these weights off the deadlift bar and we're going to be setting up for some overhead strength. Uh, sorry, my girl's back in the crib right now. You're good. Keep going. Yeah, HD, I know, I can put it on Do Not Disturb. Like I said, I wasn't planning on going live today. So I just went live last minute, and I can't switch it to Do Not Disturb while I'm on live with you guys right now. Can't switch it off right now, so it is what it is. All right, guys, we're getting into some push work. Just give me a second to clean up this weight. So just like, so you guys can see, these are 35-pound plates. Most people will say they're 45s. <clears throat> we don't cap out here. So we're going to set up now. Yo, Joshua, man, I appreciate the donation. Big ups to you. So, a training split that involves skill training, body weight, and weight. The, bro, check out. So, that's why I like to train shoulders and back, chest and legs. Because shoulders and back, you pretty much, listen, the main skills in calisthenics that most people want to learn are planches, front levers, right? 360s, that freestyle shit. Now let me just, let me take a step back, right? Competitions when calisthenics, right? When you're training basics and you're learning, everyone's doing the basics, right? Push-ups, pull-ups, and dips, right? Pretty much pushing and pulling the three main exercises that are gonna target the full upper body. 
What most people don't start training are handstands because they require a little more skill and efficiency. And when you're in tournaments and competitions, it's always reps and sets of pretty much just pull-ups, dips, and push-ups, right? Sometimes I'll throw body weight squats in there. When it comes to skill training, skill training, you don't really have to be specific with chest workout, right? You've got to have a lot of pull strength for front levers and back levers, 360s. You also need to have a ton of shoulder strength for planches, front levers as well, because planches are going to be very demanding on the entire shoulder joint, a little bit of upper chest. So when it comes to training more skills, I would, I would definitely recommend getting stronger shoulders and pull strength, because those are gonna be the two muscle groups that are gonna really benefit you when it comes to nailing those calisthenic skills that most people want, right? And you guys gotta learn to scale the intensity. You guys can't, like I said, this is a full upper body workout, so I'm touching on everything. But you guys can see, I'm not doing too much. The first routine I did, Basically, two workouts for the first exercise. Deadlifts and weighted pulls. The front levers themselves were supersets to the deadlifts. So the deadlifts and front levers were one workout in themselves. And we did three, actually we did four sets. Four sets, that's it. And then we went to three sets of weighted pulls. So seven total working sets for pull. That's not that high. Remember, I'm hitting pull muscles two times a week minimum. And remember, I don't look at my full program as a week. I look at it as a bigger picture. So if I cycle through, Chest in, if I cycle through shoulders and back, chest and legs, a day off, upper body, lower body, take another day off, that's six days I hit the full four day split with two off days, and now on the seventh day I'm ready to start on day one again. So within that week I'm already hitting my shoulders and back for the third time on the seventh day, you understand? So you don't have to look at it as seven days, look at it as a bigger picture. Alright, so we are going to throw. So I'm going to throw the 35s back on the bar. So we're going to be at 115. Warm up set, I'm just going to go for six reps. So, and again, we're going to go three working sets of overhead press for the main shoulder work. Volume's going to be low, intensity going to be relatively high. We're going for singles. Probably just throw on 135 for set one, go for one, and then from there I'll determine if I want to go up and wait for the remaining two sets. How many years of training did it take? Bro, I've been training for nine, for since 2010, bro. I've been training since 2010. I've been training and dieting and taking it seriously since probably 2013, right? So let's say about seven, eight years right now of consistent training and dieting. And um, it's just consistency, guys. When I don't train the skills, the skills do fall off. So front levers, planches, handstands especially if you don't use it you can lose it right so you always want to keep the workouts and the movements that you guys are trying to master consistent in the plan people's goals change over time right so when I'm trying to get when I'm trying to bulk up or gain size which I'm trying to do now which I always try to do every year typically my calisthenic this is the first year I'm pretty much focusing on back to my roots and 90% calisthenics the last couple years I've been doing when the winter time would come I would do a 50-50 split half weight training half calisthenics which would always dampen my calisthenic mobility and pretty much how well I can move in my body. And I'm trying to avoid that completely this year. So the only, like I said, the only exercise you see me doing, literally one, ex one shoulder exercise with weight, overhead press, barbell squatting, deadlifts, and one uh, chest exercise, usually dumbbell bench press as of late. Everything else is calisthenics. All my volume works, pretty much all calisthenics. So just consistency, guys. You guys got to know the goals that you want to hit. You guys gotta know how to train for them specifically. Bro, I never wear, I don't ever wear a lifting belt. I tried it one time when I was doing heavy squats and I didn't like it because I felt like it now took away from my body of learning how to engage. I've been doing this 
for years without a belt. So I tried using a belt not too long ago, and I felt like it inst once I put that belt on and it was there compressing and stabilizing my core for me, I felt like I lost the whole connection to my body and doing it myself. So I don't use a belt no more for those reasons. Nah, bro, I re very rarely drink alcohol, man. I ain't gonna front. I'll be done shortly, yeah. Weights give my joints aggravation. By the way, always pain free. It, listen, joint pain with calisthenics is a little bit inevitable. The more and more you rep, it's going to happen. Just working through it and not damaging yourself too hard. So, I'm going to add some weight. So, we're going to throw, look, no cap, guys. Look, these are only 10 pounds. So, we got 45 on each side. <laughs> 45 pounds on each side. We're just gonna go for one rep. So we got 135 on the bar. We're just gonna go for singles right now. Pretty smooth, 135. I'll take about, like I said, two minute break in between each set. I'm only going for two more sets of one rep. This is how you guys gotta learn to modify the intensity, right? Go in there, hit a number that you haven't used to hit in a while, try to make some progress, back away. Listen, you don't have to make, you don't have to PR in every set. PR, that's how you're gonna stimulate muscle protein synthesis. You're gonna ensure your body getting stronger, and then back away from it, get back to the workout in that same movement a few days later. So like I said, we're gonna be doing strength training for our shoulders now, and after these three sets, you'll see some straight arm plant specific work. And again, guys, I thanks for everyone who's tuned in. All the likes, I really appreciate you guys. If you donated, I really appreciate you also. Do you use weights much to directly train arms? Nah, bro, very rarely train my arms with weights. Chin-ups, dips. Best two exercises you could do for your arms. What made me pick 135? My one rep max. Last time I was doing one rep max, I, I hit 150, and that was a few months ago. So, and I haven't done, I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of dumbbell work as of late. So I've been pretty much dumbbell pressing. This is the first time I've been doing a barbell overhead press in probably a good like six weeks right now. So I'm just keeping it modest of where I was. Never use a false grip on the overhead press. And nah, I very rarely train arms separately. They always get incorporated. Yo, Christ the King, blood money, you already know. Shout outs to you. Listen, guys, this is how you keep it modest, right? 2.5, 2.5. So we're only adding five pounds to the bar, right? And so when I hit that 150 single rep PR, it was also fresh. It was me going into the workout fresh, right? Hitting shoulder press for my first routine. Now I've been doing a ton of weighted handstands, weighted handstand push-ups. So... And I, like I said, I've been doing a lot of dumbbell overhead pressing for repetitions. Building up that volume with dumbbells has actually, I feel like I've gotten stronger with the overhead press. Because now look, I'm doing this late into my workout. It's the fourth exercise of the day. I already did strength training with deadlifts. We did weighted pull-ups. So even though it's the first push workout of the day and the push muscles are relatively fresh, the nervous system and the body in general is gonna be under a little bit of fatigue. So it's inevitable that you will have some drop off when doing whatever workout is later in the routine, right? So, 140 on the bar, let's get another one. The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they receive in the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits include up to $3,500 of dental credit, up to $1,272 for local pharmacy. 140, again, move relatively smooth. I'll probably put that as an RPE of 9, 90%. So let's just say right now, at this time of the workout, it's probably 90%, 95% of my one rep max. We'll throw up again. So look, we're gonna take the 2.5s off and throw on a five. So we're now at 145 on the bar. This is gonna be Probably our last set of presses. 
I'm not going to go to 150. I'll just go for one more set of one. Drop down, hit some volume. Then we'll get into some straight arm work for planches. And that'll pretty much be a wrap for the entire routine today, guys. So look, we've been live for 50 minutes, just about an hour. So I'm telling you, within 10 minutes, I'll probably be done with a full workout. So one hour long, tapped into a full upper body day, a little bit of lower body because of the deadlifts. And remember, this is exactly the split I'm on. Day one, if you watch the live from Monday, it was shoulders and back, and it was very light, very low intensity, a recovery workout. Day two, I filmed the whole routine. It was chest and legs, very high intensity, very demanding workout. That was done on Tuesday, Wednesday, yesterday, I took a full rest day. Now today, Thursday, full upper body day. Tomorrow would be a full lower body day, but like I said, I'm not gonna be around tomorrow. I'm gonna be road tripping. So I got some lower body working with those deadlifts. And uh, that's how you scale the intensity, guys. You gotta be specific with your training, be smart with it, know what your purpose and what your goals are, and attack them. Yo, Josh, I do online coaching, bro. Check out my website. So, barnaturalfitness.com, and if you have any other questions, you can always send me an email, uh, barnaturalprez at gmail.com. You can also DM me. I'll get back to you very fast. So, Omar, is it good to do a superset of pull-ups and dumbbell rows? If you want to build a pull endurance, sure, that'll help you. Um, I don't really typically do that superset. If I'm doing a superset with pull-ups, I would do pull-ups and uh, bodyweight rows just because it's more specific to calisthenics. I do like dumbbell rows for overall growth and muscle development for the back, but my choice for a superset would be a pull-up to a bodyweight row because it's going to have a little more spe specificity towards bodyweight training and endurance factor in that aspect. So HD, we got 145 on the bar now. Let's see how smooth this one moves. So set one, 135, set two was 140. Now we got 145 on the bar. Let's get it, guys. Remember, the setup is very important. You guys can see. I grab the bar, I engage my entire posterior chain, my lats are locked in, everything's tight. I have a strong base, core is engaged, glutes are braced, everything. So set three, 145. Again, that went up pretty smooth. Definitely tough. That's why you guys see, I like to hold the weight overhead. Fully lock out, I like my body to feel the weight that it's holding overhead. Get comfortable with it. Stabilizing overhead, everything in the gauge. Core is braced, glutes are squeezed. Everything's tight, you can't have that back arching when you have an overhead load. You're gonna be really very dangerous for the low back. So we're gonna drop down to 115 again and hit one set for reps. So look, took off a five, took off a 10. Both sides, obviously.
lower the camera for you guys. Give you a different angle. There we go. Questions? Yo, whoop whoop was good. Bro, if you're looking at Luke, man, if you're trying to do calisthenics, you just build your physique. Well proportioned, handstands, pull ups, dips, push ups, and a type of leg exercise. You can start with body weight squats. You can get into pistols after that to make the squats harder. You can do explosive jump squats. But, uh, and eventually you guys are gonna have to add some load, right? Body weight training will make your physique nice, but if you guys wanna add more muscle, once you plateau, you're gonna have to add some weighted calisthenics in to keep, so you can ensure you keep continuously making progress. All right, ready? Now let's try to get a one second pause out there. Ooh. Tell me how that looked, guys. It's not easy. It's a lot to think about. A lot of muscle engagement for a plank. And remember, listen, if you're doing, look at a, take a picture of someone doing a front lever, and then take a picture of someone doing a plank. They're mirror images of each other, right? You can take a picture of a plank and flip it over, it's going to be a front lever. You can take a picture of a front lever positioning, flip it over, it's going to be plank positioning. Same body positioning, straight, same straight arm strength, different uh, forces being used. Uh, for the front lever, pulling. For the planche, pushing. More protraction for a planche, more retraction for a scapula. Same plane of motion. Let's get one more hold again. I'll, jump, I'll push right out of it now. Watch. Ranger, get out of here. 
So I'll go for one more of those, then I'll throw some straddle reps in, and that'll be a rep. Yo, Super Seamster, appreciate the donation, man. Big ups to you in California. the video as I'm doing the movement. So, ready? Ooh. How was that, guys? Let me know. Yo, Kyle, lower back pain? Uh, honestly, you should try strengthening the lower back. Hyperextensions, body weight bridges. Go on Google and Google uh, what's a body weight bridge, a glute bridge even. You could Google a glute bridge. An excellent exercise you guys can do for your lower back strength. And if you have any pain, you guys can do it often. It could be done daily. In the mornings, do a few sets of it. It's going to teach glute engagement. And it'll really help strengthen the posterior chain. Yo, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Super Seamster. All right, so we're going to a straddle hold. And that's probably going to be a wrap, guys. Tight space for the straddle right now. Rest. Guys, one. I'm telling you, you guys need parallettes. You guys don't have to buy your own. You guys can make them out of PVC pipes. Look, guys, we've been live for 63 minutes, an hour, three minutes. So, like I said, we're going to finish it up right now with this planche straddle work. And that's going to be a wrap. So, let's go again for a planche straddle attempt. Oh. Honestly, I don't think I have to clean. Let me go backwards right now. This way for you guys. Let me know how that straddle looked right there. Yo, I really appreciate you, Seamster. Yo, HD, check out the tutorial, bro. Yo, Stagix, what it is, my bro. Appreciate you for tuning in. And again, I appreciate everybody who tuned in today. Thank you for the likes. Thanks for everyone who donated. Good. Thank you for that, HD. I'm going to do one more. Good form again. Let's get it. And look, again, the goal of this whole training session wasn't for me to come out of it fatigued and spent. I wanted to have, I had specific goals that I wanted to attain. I hit them and we moved on, right? So we didn't, we made progress on pretty much everything. We were hitting 145 on the overhead press on our third workout when my 150 was my max on a fresh day and I haven't done it in months. We were hitting three solid, actually four solid sets of deadlifts and front levers. Weighted pulls, pretty short. Three sets of 12 after deadlifts and front levers is a PR for me as well with the 50 pounds. You don't have to do too much, guys. Make progress and move on. Last set of straddle holds. Let's get it. All right, guys. Raise it up. I appreciate it one more time to everyone who tuned in. Let's go for a bonus. A bonus. A bonus. Ooh. 
And function, we had a function uh, so celebrating Hanukkah and Christmas and various things in the White House. All right, guys, you guys saw strength, skill work, all calisthenics specific, even though we had external load and we were hybrid training it up, they have a purpose for making our strength and, and uh, increasing our strength for bodyweight training, right? So hope you guys enjoyed this routine. You guys can try it out. If you guys don't have access to bars, to the deadlifts, or overhead presses, you guys can do reverse bodyweight deadlifts. I showed them in numerous videos. It'll be a little hard here. The ceiling's a little low. But basically, see, I can't show you guys. But you would basically do a reverse bodyweight deadlift on a pull-up bar. I have it in videos. You guys can practice that for your first main hinging exercise. Then you can do the front lever holds. Then your weighted pulls. If you don't have a bar for handstand, I mean for barbell military presses, work on building strength in the handstand push-up. So you can rep them easily. How can you make them harder? Throw some load on so you get lower volume. Or start doing pause reps. Pause on the bottom two, three seconds, push out of the hole. That's going to dramatically increase the intensity and it's going to require you to lower the volume of what you're used to doing. Hope you guys enjoyed this routine. Told you I'll be on the road. Tomorrow traveling. May throw in a live QA. Who knows? But uh, stay tuned. We'll be filming when we get down to South Beach. Actually, Hollywood Beach. Let me rephrase that. I'm training down in South Beach. Too busy down there. So uh, you guys already know. Like always, leave a comment if I didn't get back to you. If I missed a question, you guys could always ask it in the comment section. And uh, hold up. Can you say Bar Brothers? Yo, Bar Brothers Toronto, man. You guys are up next. Let's get it. Matt, and I appreciate you, bro. You guys inspired me to keep going. Yo, for sure. Seems so again, thanks for everyone who's tuned in. If you got a question, leave it in the comment section. Send me an email if you need to reach me. Barnaturalpress at gmail.com. You guys can go on the website, barnaturalfitness.com. Listen, for those of you who don't know, there's always a 15% discount offered with the code YouTube15. If you watch my videos, that, just so you guys know, YouTube15, you're going to always get 15% off on my website, on any of my programs. So... BarNaturalFitness.com. I got gear, I got programs, and all my services that are available are up there. So, yo, Robin, man, sorry, you, sorry you just missed out, bro. We've been out here for, we've been live for a minute. We're tuning out, but Robin, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Let's get this work.